This video is on geometric sequences. In another video, I described arithmetic sequences, which are the linear equation equivalents. Geometric sequences are used for exponential equations. So if we consider the sequence 2, 6, 18, 54, we can determine what the pattern is of change. So we can see that the values are increasing in value, so we can either add or multiply by values. I could add 4 to get to 6, but I cannot continue to add 4 to get to 18. So it is not a linear pattern. It is not arithmetic. I could determine 2 times something gives me 6, 6 times something gives me 18, and that's how we can determine if it's geometric. If I do 2 times 3, I get 6. 6 times 3 gives me 18. 18 times 3 gives us 54. So the pattern of change is we are multiplying, we're going to multiply the previous term by 3. That's how we will get to our next term. We just continue to multiply by 3. So in our table here, we have a sub 1. So this would be our first term, not our zeroth term. This would not be our y-intercept. But we can see a sub 1 is 2. That's our first term. Then we would multiply by 3. Then we would multiply by 3. Then we would multiply by 3 to get our next term. So these are ellipses. So this would be any values I want to find, I would multiply by 3 on the previous term. So to get to our a sub n, any value, I need to know what my previous term was, which was a sub n minus 1. Going back to arithmetic, this is our next value. This is our now value, what we had previous. a sub n minus 1 means the previous term, and we're going to multiply the previous term by 3. Knowing what we start with, we'll multiply the previous term. So the question is, what is a sub 9? That means what is the ninth term in the problem? So we know what the first, second, third, fourth is. We can just keep multiplying by 3. So let's write that out. Our first term is, is 2, starting at 2. We're going to multiply by 3 until we get to our ninth term. So this will be our first term. This would be our second term, whatever we get, times 3, times 3, times 3. So this is our third, fourth, and fifth times 3, which is our 6, times 3, 7, times 3, 8, times 3 gives us our ninth term. So this is our first term. This will give us our second, our third, our fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. So a sub 9 will equal to, if we multiply all this out, we'll get 13,122. Our numbers are tripling every time. We just need to make sure that we have our first term and we multiply it by 3 8 times, which is 9 minus 1. That's how we know we're multiplying it 8 times instead of 9. That's the difference between just keep knowing if you're multiplying by 9 or 8. We need to know where our first term is already, and then we multiply it by 3 only 8 times instead of 9. So let's look at another sequence. Consider 1, negative half, 1 fourth, negative 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth. So how do we determine what's happening here? We could try to determine it by guessing and checking, or we could use our next term and figure out how to get it from the previous. We could actually do negative our second term, negative one-half divided by the first term. That gives us negative one-half. We could do our one-fourth divided by the negative one-half, and that gives us a negative one-half. We can then do the negative one-eighth and divide it by the term before that, which is positive one-fourth, and that gives us a negative one half. So what we're doing here is we are multiplying every term by negative one half. 
That is our pattern. We're going to multiply the previous term by a negative one half. That's the pattern. So if we want to figure out what a sub nine is, we would take that first term of one and multiply it by negative one half until we get to our ninth term. So this is going to be our first term. This is going to be our second term, our third term, our fourth term, our fifth term, sixth term, seventh term, eighth term, and then finally our ninth term. So we have the one, that's our first term. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because that is nine minus one. When we multiply this out, we'll get one over, a positive one over 256 is equal to our a sub nine. That is our ninth term. So using the next term and dividing it by your previous, you can determine what the multiplication is. So writing a rule. Let's determine what the pattern is so that we can write an explicit rule and a recursive rule. So explicit uses the a sub n and a sub 1. Recursive uses a sub n, a sub 1, and a sub n minus 1. So writing a rule. We have 3, negative 6, 12, negative 24. So if we look at our values here, a sub 1 is equal to 3 because that's our first term. Now how do we get to negative 6? a sub 2 would equal to 3 times negative 2 gives us the negative 6. If we did a sub 3, that'd be 3 times negative 2 times negative 2. So if we keep multiplying by negative 2 each time, this will give us our value. This is also, or a sub 3 is equal to 3 times negative 2 raised to the second power because we're squaring the negative 2 so it's the to the second power if we did a sub 4 we'd have 3 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 or this would be a sub 4 equals our first term of 3 times negative 2 but we did it 3 times so that'd be raised to the third power so we could actually use this to help us write a rule. So if we wanted to do any term, we would have 3 times negative 2 times negative 2, and it would keep going. Or we could have a sub n equals 3 times negative 2. But if we're looking here, our exponent is always one number underneath what our n value is. So we could just do whatever our n value is minus 1. That'll help us write an explicit and recursive rule. So little notes over here. We're going to keep multiplying. So our pattern is keep multiplying by another factor, because we're multiplying by a factor of negative 2. But for a sub n, you only need n minus 1 factors since we already know the first term. So when I got to here, if I wanted the fifth term, I would have three times negative two, negative two, negative two, and another negative two. Because I already have the first term 
and then I multiply by however many are left. So this would be my first term. This would give us our second. This would give us our third. This would give us our fourth. I only did negative two three times instead of four. So however many ends we have, how many terms we want, we raise that negative two to one underneath how many terms we need. This actually helps us to do our explicit rule. This is our explicit rule. The explicit rule, there are two ways to write it. One is to use the a sub n, and then the other way is to write it as the exponential function. So the first way is we take our a sub n is equal to our a sub 1 times our r value, which is our common ratio, raised to the n minus 1. So r, we need to know this, that r is the common ratio. In arithmetic, it was the common difference because we're adding or subtracting. Common ratio is because we are multiplying by something. It's going to be your factor that you are multiplying by, that you multiply by. So this is your, your um, growth and decay factor as well. So that will help us if we're writing for the second way of writing it. You're going to write it as y equals a, not a sub 1, times b raised to the x. Now this is where people get confused. This a is not a sub 1. This would be your a sub 0 or whatever your y-intercept is a sub 1 is your first term. We need the zeroth term to write your other explicit rule. So for recursive, this is very similar to your now next. So your next is your a sub n is equal to your now, which is a sub n minus 1, our previous term, times whatever that common ratio is. But again, we need to know what a sub 1 is, what we're starting at is equal to a number. So r and our a sub 1 will be numbers. So we will replace these numbers with actual numbers. We'll replace a sub 1 and r with actual numbers. For the second explicit, we write it as the exponential, meaning the b and the r will be the same number. But your a on the second explicit rule is going to be your a sub 0. That's the more complicated one because you have to go backwards in value. Because this is your first term, we will need to go backwards to get our zeroth term, our y-intercept.